Hello, my friends. We are at the Audioholics Smart Home on location, boots on the ground, under the pre-framing stages, doing the pre-wiring. We have HD 2020, Don Dunn. He's gonna get it done. How you doing, Don? Yeah, What's up? Glad to be here, Gene. Um, apologize ahead of time. This is a construction site. A lot of noises, a lot of people working, a lot of sounds going on. Can't help that. So. This is very exciting. I, I told you guys I wanted to show you from start to finish on the AudioHawk Smart Home. The most important thing to get right, otherwise nothing works, is the cabling. So I got these guys involved because, you know, I know a lot about cables. I know about what matters in cables, what measures in cables, but I'm not an integrator and I don't know how people wire up their systems in whole home audio and video. These guys have been doing it. Don's been doing it for 27 years. This guy is almost a senior citizen. He's been here. He's been here so long doing this stuff. So he really knows the trade. You catch the early bird when we're done. That's true. Yeah, Denny's man. So I want Don to talk about what we did in this room. This is the family room system. Why we have this trunk of cables here. What they do for each TV run. How we're getting HD audio, HD video throughout the entire house, including the landscape speakers outside in the back, the landscape speakers out in the front. I want Don to give us a rundown on what we're doing here that makes it a difference when you have a hired professional integrator helping you out. Um, thanks, Gene. So as integrators, one of the most, if not the most important thing that we do for our clients is installing and pre-wiring a correct infrastructure inside of a home. If the home is wired properly, there's almost no problem you can't overcome easily. If a home is not wired properly, then you then you have issues you have to deal with. So over the years, we've done things c quite different. Uh, back in the early 2000s, we used to run a bundle of cables that would have like a two, uh, two RG6 coaxials, two category five cables, and actually two fibers. What we come to find out was that running the fiber was just dumb because there's no standard for fiber. All the manufacturers that create and infrastructure inside of a home to distribute media, do it over category cable, not fiber. So there's just no real reason at this point. I know a lot of your followers are always asking about fiber. We do use fiber in particular situations. We use a proprietary fiber cable for long distance runs to gates from building to building and commercial applications where we have proprietary equipment to um, take that and, and turn it into a signal. On most of our homes now, we run what we call a distributed video drop or distributed video outlet. Now, I know a lot of integrators maybe do it a little bit different. Some companies do it a little bit different. So at HD 2020, we like to run what's called the distributed video drop. And then that drop will run one category six shielded cable. We use that for video distribution, um, HD based T video that allows us to run uh, video up to 330 feet with the proprietary with a certain equipment to do that. There's also video over IP, but that's something we'll get into another time. We also run two additional category six cables. Those cables are used for things such as controlling TVs with the centrally located rack. Uh, many of the TVs now, like the Sony's that we use, have IP drivers. We plug them in, we learn them into the system. Now we have full control. If not, or it's a TV that's older, we use some of the conductors on that cable um, to actually run an IR infrared system on that with a flasher. Then. That third run, more often than not, is used for um, a peripheral device like a Roku box, or more often than not, what we do is a smart surge protection system that allows us to monitor and remotely reboot products, and that connected to the network. Now, it can be connected Wi-Fi. Even though Wi-Fi has gotten a lot better, we still prefer to do hardwired connections whenever possible, except, especially when we're streaming media and whatnot to TV. And we found that, that the three Cat 6s, kind of to be the magic number for us. We used to do less, we've done more. Um, we also run an RG6 coaxial cable in there. Mostly that's for resale value or locating a cable box behind a TV if it's a, a local based system. Um, but sometimes we'll use it, for instance, somebody wants to add a subwoofer and it's not wired for a subwoofer in that particular room. What we'll do is from a from the output of a audio video receiver is we'll run a, a, a cable through, we'll turn that into a, a uh, RCA cable and we'll run that to um, a subwoofer wireless transmitter and locate that behind the TV so that actually takes and gives you that 0.1 channel or a 2.1 system in a room so 
usually covers most of what we want to do. Sometimes we'll run more if it's a particular situation or it's some kind of special system. We've done some stuff different here. I think in Gene's case, we actually um, ran some additional cables down low. We ran uh, four coaxial cables that can be turned into audio cables. So if Gene wants to take a device such as an analog CD player, a Wii, something that has two, two channel analog audio, you can run that and that runs up to the rack. You can actually send analog audio signal over good coaxial RG6 or RG59 cable, a tremendous distance and it still it holds the signal very well. And we also run an additional uh, two CAT6s down here just for ancillary use or, or something that we, he might wanna plug in a game system or whatnot. But this should give Gene everything he needs to have coming down from his rack. Of course, the subwoofers will be located in this wall and we've got speaker wires come down through here. But distributed video runs, if you're building a new home or thinking about building a home or remodeling, it's a good idea to run a bundle of cables to the video device, um, run back to a central location. So, so with all this CAT6, what are we using to convert that now back to HDMI to the display? I think you were talking about AV Pro Edge, that eight by eight switch or something with correct, balance. Correct, so the brand that we kind of hang our hat on is called AV Pro Edge. It's a um, really, really high end uh, HDMI distribution, HDMI media equipment. Um, it's all made in America. Um, tremendous, tremendous company. 10 year warranty, I believe it has on it, advanced replacement. Uh, just absolutely wonderful product. So they use a, a variety of products, HD Base T. They actually have their own proprietary transmission system that allows them to send full 444, 4K um, at 18 gigabit yeah. go across yeah. the system. Absolutely great product, super, super reliable, very easy to set up. Now they do make HD base T extenders where you just plug the category six cable into the main matrix, then extenders on the other end. We like to use the two piece system on what they call a squid rack, which is a rack that has all the separate HDMI extenders on it. That way, if we need to change one, make one a further run or if something goes bad, we've got something that we can swap out without necessarily having to swipe the whole system. But AV Pro Edge is quality so good. We've literally got a countless number of those in, in deployments right now. Super, super reliable, fantastic video quality, and they support almost all the formats that are out now. They also make fiber optic HDMI extenders, which we've used on runs that are more than 330 feet. I think we run a little over half a mile and we're getting full 4K video on a Sunbright outdoor TV and an apartment complex that we did. Absolutely great company, wow. fast switching. Um, you know, we also like the I, uh, HD over IP, and that's something we'll get into the difference later. But in this particular case, we're going to go with that. Now, what that's going to allow Gene to do is he's got two racks. He's got one rack for the theater, and he's got a rack for the main equipment in the house. And that main rack for the main equipment, Gene's going to be able to hook his sources into that. Um, a Roku player, a DVD player, a cable box, um, if you have that, or direct TV, um, Apple TV. Anything that's a HDMI source can be input into one of the eight inputs on that matrix. Then what that's gonna allow him to do via the control four system is on any TV that's hooked up to the system, literally pick what source he wants to watch and it will send it through to the monitor, to the projector, to the, to, to the television and has full 4K video quality. And with the control four, even though the equipment is in another room, it's like the equipment's in the same room, works instantaneous. Really, really slick system. We do lots and lots of that as integrators because people hate to see cables. They hate having to think about where I'm gonna put my cable box in a cabinet on top of something. I got wires hanging. Now we can locate everything in one central location in a closet and it's super, super clean. Yeah, so the great thing about what Don was saying is with this AV Pro Edge equipment, right out of the gate it supports full 4K, 18 gigabit transmission. They have options in the future if we wanna to go to eARC, HDMI 2.1 to go to the 40 gig max data rates that that service or that uh, technology offers, that's years down the road. So we're gonna be covered for a long time. And, and, and another cool thing is Jason Dunstall um, is an ISF super pimp. <laughs> He's one of the best um, ISF certifiers and trainers in the world. He travels all over. He, he does all the corporate training for AV Pro Edge. So they're a ve very much a video centric company for commercial and residential installations. Just a fantastic product. Um, even if you're just looking for an extender, something to consider with those. So the other cool thing too is we have upgrade ability. Uh, Don, you ran Smurf tubing throughout the house between the two between the two racks. Flex tubing. Sorry. Flex tubing. I'm sorry. So if we ever need to change a cable, if we ever need to upgrade cables, that option is always there for us in the future. That's something I couldn't do in my existing Audi Hawks 
um, showcase home, something I could do here. I'm ready for the future. I'm ready to embrace new technology. fiber. Now, Eugene's always asking me, a lot of the followers are talking about running fiber, which actually kind of makes sense when you think about it, but there's just no standards for it. We tried running fiber as a standard to our demarcation runs, and one, one provider didn't use that multi-mode fiber. And it was just too expensive to run a multitude of different fibers to it. So if you're really worried about future upgradability, I wouldn't worry too much because for the foreseeable future, the category cables, whether it's Cat 6, Cat 6A, eventually Cat 7. I mean, a lot of guys are still using Cat 5E and still have bandwidth left to use. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you are, the Smurf tube or flex tubing, which we'll show, something that you might want to drop down if you can. The only problem with that is if you're on it, like in an inside wall, it's no problem. If you're on an exterior wall where it's got furring strips that comes out, it's a little more difficult to do that because you got to have that space to do that. So just something to take in consideration. As consumers, when you're out thinking about wiring a house, you're going to have a million people tell you a million different things. Take it from the people that have done it. They do it every day. They've done it for 20 some years. We've kind of got this down to a science. And a lot of times we'll go back to houses that we wired seven, eight, nine years ago. The house has been sold, new people bought it. We come in and we're still good to go with the wiring infrastructure that we put in that many years ago because it was cat five, but it's still viable. So something to think about as you get further into it. We want to educate you, leave your feedback on it. Nobody knows everything. He thinks he does, but nobody else. <laughs> Seriously, if, if you guys have comments or, or a different way of doing things, we're open to listen. Yeah. And so, you know, I want to give a shout out to Blue Jeans Cable. They're the ones that supplied all the cabling for this house. I think we, you said it was like three miles of cable yeah, that we put. So Blue Jeans provided us all the 6A, the CAT 6A cable. They provided us the 1694 RG6 cable, the balance cable, the 1800F, I believe, all Belden. And the really cool thing is I, I spent you know, several weeks looking at the best speaker cables I could put in this house with the less, the least amount of losses, low inductance, and I found a Belden cable, I believe it's a 1313A, 10 gauge, very high strand count cable. CL rated. CL rated, it's very thick insulated, beautiful cable. We're gonna be using that to wire up the front speakers and the subs in this room. The entire theater room is wired up in the 10 gauge. It, it, it's strong enough, it really has a, probably a couple hundred pound pull force on it. So yeah, Blue Jeans, we really thank them. They wired up my old house, they wired up this house. We got HD 2020, I, I couldn't work with a better installation company. I'm really proud to be working with these guys. They sent their whole crew. I mean, I feel kind of, yeah, I feel special. I feel, I feel loved. I feel loved in Tampa from HD 2020. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Please thumb it up, share it. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. I'll be putting up special uh, content there that you don't get to see on our YouTube channel. You get the early access to the videos first. We'd be giving away some headphones over there. We have just a lot of different promotions going on. So I think we are wrapped up. And until next time, my friends, keep, keep listening. listening. So Gene, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we wire on our distributed video or some little things that we do as integrators that kind of differentiate us from your, you know, hey, I know a guy can run wires or my electrician can just do it. First of all, electricians do great at electrical. Most hate doing low voltage. Not all of them, but most of them hate to do it. So some things that we do and all, most all top shelf in CDA type integrators do is we run our trunk line or distributed video outlet through a P-ring, we wrap it so that it helps avoid the labels coming off and drywall dust and any damage on the cable. Now in this case, this is kind of a unique the way this house is constructed. So we kind of popped in and popped out, it's poured up here. So we brought it as far up as we could. Then we use what's called standoffs. And what that does is it brings the wire out. So as the drywallers come and they attach the drywall and they're putting their screws in, it helps to avoid getting a screw um, put into a wire. And also see, you'll see the path that we took trying to get these wires in such a way that when that drywall goes on, they're going to be out of the way of the screws and damage. And you'll notice on everything, we've got nail plates. Now that's kind of a standard, although some people miss them. Again, another step in, in actually trying to make sure that those wires don't get damaged. Now this kind of goes up and you'll see these JL Audio subs that we put up today. And it's just a super slick way. 
the quality of the pre-wires is paramountly important. It, it's probably the least sexy part of what we do as integrators, but I have to say it's the most important part. And it's the signature of a good company, how the how everything is groomed, how the wires come out of the wall, how everything is labeled, everything is zip tied. Um, you'll notice as you go through your house that anytime our wires come near any kind of high voltage cable, um, we take them zip time, we pull them off. We take a lot of care to avoid any kind of interaction between a high voltage and a low voltage so we can avoid any kind of interference on the cables. And that's just a signature of what a good integration company does. And it's important because, and I've said this several times, if you have a bad pre-wire, then you've got really serious problems. If you've got a good pre-wire, then you really don't have any issues. Anything can be fixed pretty easily. It's super important that you get the infrastructure right. Ready? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> And they have various different HDMI. That's all right. With me, man. All right.